Good, good afternoon, uh, June, and I'm very glad to, to see you uh, in Siem Reap, uh, the, the city of uh, Temple. It is called the city yes. of Temple, and you. you are from U.S., uh, yes. but you, are, you, you look Japanese, yes. uh, so can, can yes. you tell me a little <laughs> bit of why uh, uh -huh. you are from America, but yes. you look uh, <laughs> Japanese? So I am a second generation, generation Japanese American, so my parents came to the United States in the 1950s, and uh, they had two children born in Japan and then three more born in the United States. So I am a proud Japanese American. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, why you are here with me in uh, Siem Reap and then uh, I, I, I have known that you come here and you have um, uh, a kind of um, training children or maybe mm -hmm. just a kind of uh, art or residency or something yes. like that. Just uh, tell me a little bit, yeah. you have been here for, uh, for two weeks already here. Yes. Well, so this is my fourth time to come to Cambodia. And uh, the first time was to specifically go to Angkor Wat because, you know, that's the dream of any person or artist, especially because of that beautiful, you know, massive temple complex. But so that was the beginning uh, introduction to Cambod Cambodia. But the second time I came was with a group, an art group. It was led by Lauren Ida, who lived in Cambodia for um, many years over time, you know, back, okay. with a com combination of time, it was probably more than 10 years, and was fluent in Khmer. And uh, she led this art tour where we were introduced to many artists. Yeah. In uh, Phnom Penh, in Kampot, in uh, Siem Reap. So uh, that really deepened my love for Cambodia is the people. Yeah. And then I came again the third time for kind of an international um, residency with Open Studio. That's Lauren Ida's group, is Open Studio Cambodia. So we were working side by side with. Um, Cambodian artists. Yeah. So that was just this time. Uh, <laughs> the, well, the that time before. Yeah. And then this time. Uh, In the fifth or fourth. This is the fourth time. Ah, okay. okay. So the last time that I was here, uh, we I met we met uh, uh, Malin and Saret. Okay. And they were very gracious and <laughs> really enjoyed their, their uh, getting to know them, but seeing their art, like looking at their art after mm -hmm. meeting them, and I was just blown away. They're wonderful so this is your fourth time in uh, in, in yeah in cambodia and specifically in siem reap and yes. uh, okay in uh, blue art center yes. here so what are you doing now uh, yes. since uh, two weeks so, uh, sorry wait, sorry yes so we uh, you know did some traveling in the south of cambodia and um this was a very special place for my brother as well so i wanted to retrace his footsteps because he's no longer with us mm -hmm. So it was a very kind of personal, special time. That was before we came up to Siem Reap to start teaching. Mm -hmm. So the last time we, we were in Cambodia, uh, we met uh, Saret and Malin, and they- The owner of a yes, Blue Art Center yes, here. Yes, a yeah. wonderful <laughs> Blue Art Center. Yeah. And uh, they invited us to come back to teach. And so that was our grand opportunity to ah, come to back to teach again. children here. Yes, yes. So um, how they are when you taught them? They were wonderful. Yeah, so... Uh, Compared to American yes, students. Yes, they were wonderful. Um, what do you so, mean they are wonderful? Okay, so, it means they learn fast or maybe oh, yes, they have... All of that. So I had an art school for children in my home t or my little town in Washington. So I had this art school. I was teaching children about this age that we're teaching at Blue Arts Center. And um, what I see with the, the children that we are teaching right now, they're so attentive, they're so respectful, they're so focused. And um, so they, you know, they have already learned a lot before we came here. So the level of where, you know, they are at right now is very high. We had a five-year-old to, we had an 18-year-old in another class, so a big age range. But even that five-year-old was just very keen, uh, mm -hmm. observant um. drawer. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's been a joy that they are so receptive to what we have to share with them in technique and drawing and, you know, just thinking about art. For example, it compared to uh, uh -huh. American students, for example, and yes. Cambodian students. So uh, which one you think they are smarter? I, I cannot <laughs> say that, but uh, uh -huh. uh, based uh -huh. on your experience uh, yeah. here. Well, I feel like I've had a very privileged uh, teaching experience, teaching art because um, the, you, you know, the students, the children were already interested in art uh, that came to my art school. 
So I had already um, very kind of engaged students. Mm -hmm. So similar to what we have here at Blue Art Center, um, I've also done volunteer teaching in the classroom, mm -hmm. doing art projects. So you know you have many more children, maybe 30 children, yeah. and um, different attention spans. So it's a much uh, harder thing to try to yeah. get focus and keep focus. Mm -hmm. um, so you know I think children, the children that I've experienced teaching, are equally, you know. Um, adept at art, mm -hmm. you know, here and in uh, America, yeah. but there is a certain sense of, um, you know, the focus that I've experienced here, which is a pleasure as a teacher yeah. to have. But in terms of uh, intelligence, for example, mm. smartness or something, oh, yeah. so uh, well, can, can you elaborate yeah. more? I'm going to be very diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so, so you, are, you are an artist and contemporary artist, so you are here in Siem Reap and you visited already temple in yes. Siem Reap, so you get inspired yes. by temple or something yes, and so have, your, uh -huh. have your work or maybe uh, not really because yeah. you are contemporary artist? Well, I'm inspired as you say, um, every time I've come to Cambodia I've been able to go to Angkor Wat, so I feel very blessed because I know some Cambodian people haven't been able to visit the temples, so I'm uh, very blessed and happy that I've been able to do that. So when I go to the temples, it's it's kind of like a spiritual wash. You know, you're just kind of in the presence of this massive amount of energy and will to make these beautiful temples. So from that grand scale, and then you enter the temples, then you see all the intricate details that are so interesting to me. So, you know, we are photographing kind of like, you know, zooming in for details. I haven't made anything directly like is an Angkor Wat uh, piece, but it all is kind of, as an artist, you're kind of soaking in all these ideas and experiences and um, things to inform your future works. So it may not be like a clear and direct path that you might see, but it's there. <laughs> That's why I keep coming back, because I just keep, need to keep filling up with that. So for example, you, you are contemporary artist, and yes. then when you look at the temple, temple yes. Um, yes. Uh, cultural uh, heritage, yeah. so what is the difference in your mindset, for example, compared to um, the temple uh, yeah. which are antique or something, and then you work here, for example, just a contemporary yeah. art, yeah. and it's very metaphorical, and temple yeah. just uh, something yes. uh, that you can see, you yes. can t contemplate or something. Just uh, tell me a little yeah. bit the difference between uh, yeah. something which is old, and then uh, this yeah, is yeah. very creative, <laughs> metaphorical, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, um, I guess to begin with, I'm a maker, you know, an artist, you know, we do things. But um, I like physical, you know, nuts and bolts of making three-dimensional things. And so, you know, when I go to the temples, I'm thinking of, like, it boggles my mind. How was this made? And, you know, the massive blocks that were brought in, like, with elephants or, you know, there's uh, different ideas of how, how things were made. But um, I guess that's a key thing for me, the material, you know, how did they do it? The, you know, such refined um, sculpting of the, you know, the relief. Mm -hmm. And then the stories that they tell, like on the An in Angkor Wat in the outer um, uh, gallery uh, surrounding the whole, the whole inner complex, the stories are just fascinating. And I don't understand, I don't know all the stories, but just to look at the intricacy and the interconnected characters and, um, it's, it's just fascinating, so I feel like I can't get enough. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, beyond Uncle Temple, for example, and if um, I, I saw that uh, you, you travel a little bit already in the town in Siem Reap or yes. something, so beside Temple, so um, uh, how do you feel of um, Uncle Wat Siem Reap life uh -huh. uh, compared to Japan or maybe to oh. US? Uh. <laughs> Oh, that's a really yeah. hard question. I mean, my life in the U.S. is so busy, 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 <laughs> with lots of projects and my work, and um, you know, uh, you, I'm always having to do something and be responsible. And you know, this time away is uh, 
something where we can just soak in and mm -hmm. kind of go with the flow. The big, big, big reason for us to be here this time are the people. So the people that we've met in the past, and so we're reconnecting with them, and that truly fills my heart. And uh, then we've met new people along the way. Some of our friends have taken, them to, taken us to their home village to meet their extended family, yeah. and that is beyond... <laughs> Uh, you know, anything that I could have hoped for, yeah. that we can see real Khmer culture and everybody has been so um, warm and friendly and welcoming to us. Uh, we have one friend who uh, took us to a village, uh, his village, that is like 30 kilometers south um, on the road six towards Phnom Penh. So uh, we went to the, his home uh, <laughs> village and his house and we were the first foreigners that have huh? ever gone to their house. So I feel so honored that, um, you know, he would share that with us. And uh, his family was wonderful. And so those are the experiences that I, you know, that's why we are here. That, I mean, it's the biggest hope. I, don't, I shouldn't even say hope. We didn't expect it. But it's the biggest gift you know, in our oh, travels. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So I think maybe yes. we, we move uh, to okay. another topic because yes. uh, I'm interested in your book and uh, the book uh, called The Pulse of uh, Water. Yes. And maybe it is uh, related to Mekong River yes. because I, before the interview, I, I talked a little bit with you yes. about, uh, about your book. And yes. So why the name, uh, yeah. The, yeah, the name uh, of your book, uh, which is called The Pulse yes. of Water, yes. why? So why that idea and why uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. book? Yeah. Well, the Mekong River has been very close to my heart from the first trip that I took to, um, not the first trip, but um, one of the first trips to the Mekong, or to Southeast Asia. I went from Thailand down to Luang Prabang on the slow boat um, on the Mekong River, and you know, the but it, it was in uh, 2019. Yeah, this was when I first went down the Mekong River was 20, 2005. Ah, 2005. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So um, you know, it was a time where you don't, you can't do anything. You're on the boat, and you can just see the water and see the landscape, and just think and meditate. And I was just looking at the water as we're floating down for, for so long. And it was in the summertime, so the monsoon rains had created the sienna color of the river, which is very unusual for me to see because the rivers where I live in Washington State, the rivers run very clear. So you can see down to the bottom of the... Of the but uh, uh, in the Mekong River, you, you, you can't, can't see, see. Yeah, the, yeah, the, so it's very the ground. Yeah. And so as we're going down, the water is swirling around on the top, top layer. And it, it's just so curious, like, what's going on? There's something going on underneath. And so that just made me kind of really reflect on, you know, this action, something hidden, but it's affecting something on the top. There might be trees or, you know, rocks or something to disturb the water so it's making this swirl. And as I'm sitting on that boat for two days, I'm thinking, oh, this is like, you know, we as people, you know, we have this surface, but there's our, you know, who we are is really underneath that you don't see, but it makes us who we are. So that was the metaphor for, for doing this Mekong River. I, and at that time, I didn't know how I would do it. I just wanted to focus on this idea of, of you know, something causing some action up here that's hidden underneath. And then when I kind of came to this idea of making this wooden river, um, I, I was also beginning to think about uh, the rivers itself. So to me, rivers are like the circulatory, circulatory system of the earth. So, you know, it's the, the bloodline of, of the earth. Of, of the earth. Of the earth. Of the earth, of the world. Of the world, yeah. yes. And so uh, the blood, you know, and we, we can take our pulse right here. Yeah. And that shows us, are we healthy? Are we all, alive? All, all are we alive? <laughs> or, you know, or if you stop it, you know, it's not good. You know, your, your circulation will cut off, your hand will become purple, and it's not mm -hmm. good. Just like the Mekong River, there's lots of dams going on upstream all through the, the, uh, the length of the Mekong River. And uh, the 
cultures downstream are going to mm. are suffering from that because you can't from uh, from dam from uh, dams. Oh, so okay. it's I'm still going back to the circulatory system and mm -hmm. bloodline. So the word pulse is from this. Mm -hmm. You know, you take your pulse with blood, and the river to me is like our bloodline, and the the world's blood. So uh, we say in English, um, you know, when you take you have your pulse on something, mm -hmm. that means you're, you know, you're really uh, seeing some, something for it being real, like, or, or um, this is hard for me to <laughs> explain, but having your pulse on something is like you, you uh, mm -hmm. are knowing what's going on because yeah. you are, you mm -hmm. know, testing this to okay. see. That's probably not a good explanation, but <laughs> yeah. there is a saying about the pulse. Uh, so about the Mekong River, yes. uh, it's the same because uh, you visited already, yes. and then you experienced already, and you think maybe Mekong River has something wrong, or maybe Mekong River is in danger. Uh, that is why uh, your feeling uh, is a bit different, and then uh, you you made this book and uh, yes. talking about uh, the, the the problem of uh, yes. the Mekong. Yes. Uh, if yeah. I'm yeah, all right. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, you know, in my research, like when I first floated down the Mekong River, I had no idea of any damming, and I'm not sure even how long that's been going on. But you know, since that time, I've come back so many times, um, and I've learned. I've read articles about. The damming, real, and yeah, so started the dam, researching yeah, that, yeah. and so that all kind of fed into the metaphor of the river as the um, kind of the a swelling pulse. water. Yeah, pulse, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pulse. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's very metaphorical. You know, yes. I I could not understand, yes, and yes. I I look at your book, and it's very hard for me oh, because okay, uh, you okay. are talking about Mekong River. Uh, you are concerned about the Mekong River, which is uh, maybe in danger or something. But you know, on the on, on the cover of your book, uh, so the installation, the shape, and then you know, yes. you, you in the kind of uh, you don't talk about Mekong River. So, could you explain to me what what is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. You know, I work, my, my main material is wood sheets, flat wood sheets, and I cut pattern into it. So I have um, done water patterns before, but to make it sculptural and have it enter into the, into the room, like water would flow into the, you know, into space, uh, I'm using the wood material in the mm. way that I typically use by cutting it. And, um, it, it, Another factor in my art practice is I'm trying to push my material as much as I can. So I was getting frustrated with the flat sheets of wood, the flatness of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to convey a river, a river is flowing and moving. Yeah. And yeah. There's, so I, start, I realized I can um, cut the material down and then sew it back together so that it becomes this completely different malleable form. So I'm completely changing the structure of the flat wood sheets into something that is malleable to me like water. So, you know, this is a wooden river. <laughs> okay, so a wooden a wind, a wind, a wood a river. Wood, uh, uh, wood or wind? Wood. Oh, wood this or is river. A wood, yeah. wood river. And yeah. this bottom part, you know, it goes up higher is the waterfall. So like in um, near Luang Prabang, there's Kuang Si waterfall. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful waterfall. So all the tributaries, the, the rivers that are flowing into the Mekong River are running cl uh, clear because they're coming off the mountain. And it's only when it gets to the Mekong, you know, low, all the, the dirt and the silt is, is um, mixing up to make that sienna, this brown color. But um, anyway, it just, <laughs> it just, so my effort is to make this river this idea i'm not yeah. you know i'm not a, an artist who paints exactly like a photograph and so in my sculpture too i don't you know sculpt something that looks like um, a figure or something it's the idea i understand uh -huh. i just understand so uh, so after after your work i mean uh, you did your work already and then to you 
So the the Mekong River is still healthy, or maybe Mekong River is uh, face faces uh, something uh, serious, or can I can think you tell us something uh, very serious is gonna is happening with the dams? Um, the last trip in 2019, we were able to go to uh, the 4,000 islands, and so down in the southern part of Laos, but bordering Cambodia. And it's where there are uh, very few freshwater dolphins, mm -hmm. and um, they are in, be, they are endangered because you know the water is being cut off above, and you know they do these controlled um, water releases, but it's 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 um, interrupting nature, so you know there's the fish can't go where they they need to go, and um, the mitigating factors that the governments have done um, is not enough to, for the health of the river, the environment surrounding the river, the livelihoods that fish from the river. So and uh, also people along the river. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there, a lot of towns or villages have been displaced because if they mm. put a. a a, a dam in, and they flood the area above. So they they, they move. Yes, yeah, they move yeah. up. Yeah. So their home that they know is, you know, so they have to to relocate. So I just find it very <laughs> damaging, and I just I feel concerned. Yeah. So you feel concerned. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. But mm -hmm. when you do this work, this job, yes. and then maybe uh, not a lot of people understand yeah. your your sorry to yeah, to say I to you like that. that and yes. So why you don't want to mm -hmm. do something directly yes, and then I, inform yeah. directly? So this one, this one is very metaphorical. Metaphor I understand this is your work, yes. your art work. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just my way. <laughs> I, I, um, I like to be kind of more poetic about something. I, I feel like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's easier to just be direct and tell the, you know, straight on, something or something you can relate to i feel like what interests me is to how do i talk about that in kind of an artful way and so that's why i'm so always seeking metaphors uh to to describe it so you know maybe it's you know maybe it's a little bit of japanese character because you know japanese like to you know not they say, don't want to say yeah, something yeah, directly something yeah like that. maybe that's it okay and, you know americans are fairly direct but I have retained that Japanese, I think, you know, we just kind of go around to tell, you know, maybe a story that, you know, is, is telling a story, but trying to do it in an artful way. So I understand people don't understand, and no, no. I like to describe <laughs> they, uh, my work because some people don't want to, some artists don't want to explain their work at all, and I understand that too, but I like to share what my work is about because I do know it's, it's not a direct thing that you can understand. And so when they hear it, they seem to you know, appreciate the work. And then they give me f um, some input or feedback on what they see that I may not have seen in it. So, so I, I appreciate talking about it. And so I think maybe your work will influence, um, influence. Uh, I, I mean the country, uh, the country in the Mekong uh, region. Oh, oh, well, that would be. <laughs> Do you think so? That would be nice. <laughs> it's a special place in my heart. Uh, the, okay. You know, the regions along the Mekong River. So well, after visiting the Mekong River, do you like it so much, and oh, why? Yes. I don't know. It's just the cultures that are all along. I love the long boats that float. You know the. In Laos, they have the even here. Um, I don't know. It's just a, this fascinating, mm -hmm. fascinating part of the world, and the Mekong River has just kind of been the prominent theme for me. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. The Mekong River and the people of Cambodia. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Jun. Uh, thank, thank you for you. for Akon your Tan. information and mm. very interesting uh, work. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.